Hi, right, friends. Good morning. It is uh, Thanksgiving Day, Thursday, November 24th. Uh, hope you're doing well. Hope your Thanksgiving Day um, goes well. Uh, maybe you're uh, gathering with some friends or some family. Maybe you're, maybe you're by yourself today. Uh, whatever it is that you have going on today, um, pray that God's presence would be with you and that you would feel a sense of of delight in who God is, and that you would have a moment to um, be able to say thank you uh, for all of the things that God has blessed us with—the things, the life, the the breath, the world. Uh, you know, count, we're counting our blessings today. It's a good day to 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 do that and participate with lots and lots of people around the country as we uh, as we do this. Um, we're, we're going to do something a little different just for today, and the reason we are is because our next psalm uh, that we would be on is Psalm 119. Uh, you may know that Psalm 119 is the longest uh, chapter in the, entire, in the entire Bible. In my um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12. My, in my Bible, it's 12 pages. Um, and we, the times that we've gone through the Psalms, we've never done it in one sitting. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to break it up into uh, probably four different days to move through Psalm 119. Um, and I just didn't want to start it today uh, because we're going to have um, a, you know, several days away uh, before we get together again next Tuesday. So uh, we're, going to put, we're going to put our journey through the Psalms on hold and instead, what we'll do is we'll go through the daily office liturgy, which includes a gospel reading today, Luke uh, 19. And so instead of hearing a psalm this morning, we're going to hear from one of the gospels. So hope you'll uh, hope that's okay with you. Um, that's what we'll do today. And then next week, we'll be back at it. And just a reminder, there won't be a devotion tomorrow. It won't be made available until next Tuesday. So, um, so join me. Uh, we're introduced with our opening sentence of the daily office, which goes like this. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. And from Romans, O depth of wealth, wisdom, and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are God's judgments, how untraceable are God's ways, the source, guide, and goal of all that is, to God be glory forever. Here is a reading from Luke 19. Now Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief, uh, chief tax collector, and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome him. And all who saw it began to grumble. And they said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek out and to save the lost. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. That's all the text tells us, but within those words, uh, there is a rich backdrop, a deep backdrop, a controversial backdrop. Tax collectors were traitors. They were the Jewish people who had, uh, had aligned themselves with the Roman Empire. They were the ones that had said, yes, I am a Jewish person, but my life would go better if I was Roman. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to act on behalf of Rome as they impose imperial taxes on the people. The taxes, of course, were unfair. They were, uh, they, they were overly burdensome. And they weren't beneficial for the Jewish people all that much. Uh, taxes, as we think of them today, at their best, <clears throat> allow a society to flourish at their best, right? Um, 
taxes in those days had nothing to do with the people with whom they were taken. They were seen as a, uh, basically as a bribe to keep the imperial R Roman uh, collective from destroying them altogether. And so Zacchaeus was a traitor to the, Jew to the Jewish people. The other thing is that Zacchaeus wasn't really a Roman either. And so even though he worked on behalf of Rome, he never would have been accepted by the Romans as one of their own. So Zacchaeus was uh, a loner. He had, traded his, um, he had traded his opportunities for, for, for community on both sides, whether it be with Rome or with the Jewish people. He had traded that for his own wealth, for his own benefit. And I get the sense that in this crowd, he realized that was a bad deal because he has been ostracized and he's recognizing that the, 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 the amount of money that he had, the richness that he had, he was rich, that's what the text says, but that clearly was not enough. And so he meets up with Jesus. He goes out of his way to find Jesus. He actually has to uh, work around the religious system to get to Jesus, right? The religious say, look, he is, Look, Jesus has lost his mind. He's, he's, he's extending grace to one who doesn't deserve it. And isn't that interesting? Because the whole point of grace is that it's extended to those who don't deserve it. Today, salvation has come to this house. Salvation in this passage isn't so much about forgiveness of sin, although, although it is that. Well, it's a combination. It's forgiveness of sin. Zacchaeus has been forgiven, but only after Zacchaeus has said to Jesus, I'm going to make right what I have wronged. Half of, uh, half of my possessions go to the poor, and I will pay back four times whatever I have defrauded. See, there's an issue of justice here, isn't there? It's not charity that Zacchaeus is extending. It's justice. Uh, I was told, or I was, I was reading a, a, a bit about this issue of justice and this issue of charity and how in America we're really good, we're actually quite good at charity, but we're not so great at justice. Uh, we're good at giving from what we have, but we're not so great at paying back for wrongs that have been committed. And uh, one of the, one of the um, realities of what Jesus is doing here is that he's making right for things that have been wronged. Well, that's a lot for today. Gospels are rich. They bring us into Jesus' reality, God's reality, in ways that are, are very profound. And so I hope that sits well. I hope that sits with us and does the work that the gospel is supposed to do in our hearts and minds. But I want to invite you now to join me as we uh, pray our daily office prayer. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day, brightening our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially today, we thank you for the warmth of sunlight, the wetness of rain and snow, all that nourishes the earth. We thank you, Lord, for the presence and the power of your spirit at work in our lives. Thank you for the support and the encouragement we receive from others. We thank you for those who provide for public safety and well-being. We thank you for the mission of the church around the world. I invite you to lift up your own prayer of thanksgiving this morning. Merciful God, strengthen us in prayer that we might lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing, and that we might share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Today, God, we pray for those in positions of authority over others. We pray for the lonely and the forgotten. We pray for children without families or homes. We pray for agents of caring and relief. We pray for the church in Asia and in the Middle East. We also pray today for Episcopal and Methodist churches. 
is I invite you to lift up your own prayer of petition this morning. Eternal God, you never fail to give us each day all that we ever need and even more. Give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and that we might joyfully seek our risen Lord in each person we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, I uh, hope you have a great day today. Happy Thanksgiving to you. I uh, hope to see you in church on Sunday. Uh, God bless you today. Take care and we'll see you soon.